Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the Answer Series Life Sciences videos based on our study guides. If you don't have our Grade 12 Life Sciences books, Parts 1 and 2, you'll still be able to follow these lessons. This video looks at the Evidence of Evolution, Part 2. We looked at fossil records and descent with modification in part one. In this video, we focus on the remaining evidences of evolution. So we'll be looking at biogeography and then focus on genetics and then other forms of evidence, including comparative biochemistry, vestigial organs and comparative embryology. Biogeography is the third evidence of evolution. This is the study of living things in different places. So it's the study of species distribution on Earth. Some organisms are very different in similar environments. This indicates no common ancestor. Other animals and plants are similar on different land masses, and scientists propose that these similar organisms have a common ancestor, like the African camel, the Asian camel and the llama in South America. And they suggest that these continents were once one large land mass. So biogeography is the study of the distribution of extant and extinct species in different geographical regions. Often closely related species occur in the same geographical region, which may suggest that they have a common ancestor. For example, anteaters armadillos and sloths are all found in South America and parts of the north. They share genetic similarities that indicate a recent common ancestor. Biogeographical regions may also be isolated by barriers. These barriers prevent species moving from one area to another and may lead to the formation of new species, speciation. Barriers may be mountains or oceans or smaller land masses or deserts. These isolate populations and increase chances of speciation. Scientists propose that these southern continents once formed one land mass, a supercontinent called Gondwana land, which broke up over time to eventually form the continents as we know them today. This theory is based on the movement of continents, known as continental drift, and on identical fossil plant and fossil animal species distributed on different continents. Plant and animal life in different geographical regions with similar habitats but separated by geographical barriers may also be very different. This would indicate no common ancestor. For example, the polar bears in the North Pole and the penguins in the South Pole. Africa and South America have very similar climates yet very different species. Marsupial mammals in Australia and placental mammals in the Americas. These are examples of convergent evolution, where organisms become more similar over time, but they descend from different ancestors. In other words, they do not have a common ancestor. Flightless birds show similarities despite living on different land masses and belonging to different species. For example, the ostrich in Africa, the rhea in South America, emu in Australia and the kiwis and extinct moa in New Zealand. Scientists have claimed flightless birds developing from one common ancestor where earlier forms separated when Gondwana land broke apart to form different continents. The climate and habitats changed because of continental drift. So these flightless birds adapted to the changes in the environment. There were different mutations, different selections in the different environments. But more recent genetic studies show that these flightless birds evolved from different ancestors on different continents. So it's not a great example of common ancestry, but we'll include it here as it's a recognized example in many curricula. Islands show unique species as they are geographically isolated from each other. For example, Darwin's finches and the tortoises of the Galapagos Islands. 
Islands show individuals of the same species in different habitats, because they're isolated, adapting to different environments, undergoing different mutations, and may eventually form new species. In other words, they descend from a common ancestor. Genetics is number four evidence of evolution. It shows genetic similarities between closely related species. For example, the DNA of humans is 60% similar to fruit flies, but 96% similar to chimps. It's proposed that the closer the similarities, the closer the relationship and more recent, the common ancestor. Closely related organisms have more similarities in their DNA. For example, the elephant's closest relative is the rock rabbit, as well as the mouse-like elephant shrew with its rather long nose. Scientists claim that the greater the similarities in the DNA, the more recent, the common ancestor. Genetics shows DNA as the source of variation for evolution. It shows how changes can occur and be transferred to different generations. It also explains how gene pools of populations can change and eventually result in speciation or the formation of new species. The more similar the DNA sequences or the amino acid sequence, the more closely related the species. We can see humans and chimpanzees in this table where they have an identical four amino acid sequence in a hemoglobin molecule. Number five is comparative biochemistry. This is where we compare the chemicals in different living things. Whether you're a flea or a flower or a flamingo, you share similar chemical structures. The similar biochemical composition of most living things confirms Darwin's idea that all living organisms have a common ancestor, including the double helix structure of DNA, the identical coding for protein synthesis, including the nitrogenous bases A, T, C, and G, identical protein synthesis with the same processes transcription and translation. The same set of 20 amino acids for building proteins. The same metabolic processes like respiration and photosynthesis with their enzymes. ATP as an energy carrier. The same Hox genes that determine the development of body regions, whether it's in fruit flies or the same Hox genes developing different body regions in mice or in humans. The same phospholipid bilayer membrane composed of proteins and lollipop-like phospholipids, whether in mitochondria or monkeys or millies. Vestigial organs is number six evidence. Darwin called them evolutionary remnants and considered them useless. Other modern evolutionary biologists consider vestigial structures useless for the function observed in ancestors, but useful in different functions in modern species. The pelvic bone in whales – wings in flightless birds like penguins or ostriches, tonsils in humans or the tailbone or coccyx in humans, wisdom teeth, appendix, etc. It's thought that vestigial organs decreased in size over evolutionary time due to disuse. They may be considered as homologous structures that have different functions in different organisms. They're proposed as evidence that these organisms share a common ancestor. Vestigial organs often have a different function rather than no function. Tiny pelvic bones in whales are indicated as evidence for four-footed ancestors. These bones are used as support for reproductive organs in mating. Tiny leg bones in larger snakes like pythons and boa constrictors occur in the muscle and protrude as spurs used in courtship and mating and fighting and climbing. The flightless cormorants in the Galapagos Islands have small stubby wings, useless for flight, but ensure their bodies are streamlined for efficient diving. The appendix and the tonsils are lymph tissue for fighting infection. The coccyx in humans provides attachment and support for muscles and ligaments in the pelvic area. Fracture it and you'll feel it. Comparative embryology is number seven. If we compare the embryos of for different vertebrates at early stages of development, we'll see certain similarities and some differences. If we look at this seven-week-old embryo in humans, 
we will see a nerve cord and a two-chambered heart and tail bud as well as limb buds. And we'll see pharyngeal arches in the human embryo with the comparable gill slits in the fish embryos. Scientists suggest that the more similar the embryos, the more recent the common ancestor. In other words, the earlier the divergence, the more distant the relationship. So if they diverge very early, they are distantly related. Or if they diverge much later or more recently, the more recent the relationship. As embryos develop and mature under the guide of Hox genes, they become more and more different over time. Note the similarities. They have nerve cords. They have a two-chambered heart that forms the four chambers in humans. Limb buds develop differently in different vertebrates. The tail bud, the gill slits in the fish that form the breathing apparatus and the pharyngeal arches in humans and other vertebrates that form tissues in the ear, jaw, and glands. Another comparative embryology hypothesis by Heckel suggested that embryos go through stages of their evolutionary history in their embryonic development. In other words, from fish to frogs to reptiles to mammals in their embryonic development. This hypothesis is false and not used for support of evolution anymore. A common ancestor is proposed on the basis of the similar features in the vertebrate embryos. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.